Okay, it's clean hair day and probably one of the things that I am asked the most in life is about my hair. Is it real? Do I color it? Uh, what was the grow out process of going gray? What formulas do I use? What's my cut? How do I blow dry it? I'm gonna attempt to answer all those questions, but I figure since it's clean hair day, I'm gonna just record everything that I would normally do and I'll try my best to talk about my journey while I do that. So here it is, how I got my hair to be gray and stop chasing the hair appointments. I am 40 years old and I found my first gray hair when I was 17 years old. I can remember like being in my bathroom and looking up and getting ready to do my hair and finding my first few gray hairs. They were right about here where I have like my biggest patch of white. And I was like, no way, this ain't happening. I grabbed some tweezers and I sat there and I plucked every single one of them out. And I don't know if the myth is true that if you pluck them out, you get more, but it was a downhill slope from there. <laughs> I would find them all the time and I would honestly just twist them around my finger and pull them out. I probably had about 15 of them. And when I was 18, I went to hair school and that is when I really started to dye my hair. I have had hair that is literally every color of the rainbow it was really fun so i did go to hair school um i was in new hampshire when i went to hair school ended up leaving not finishing going to massachusetts going to hair school again and getting a job in a salon and quickly realizing that the salon life was not for me i feel like every stylist on the planet should be a licensed therapist so kudos to you guys and I decided that I was just gonna stick with my best friend and let her be the person to do my hair. And so the journey of this hair started. And I feel like for so long, my hair was just such a part of my identity because I had really cool haircuts all the time. So people would always stop me and ask me about my haircut. Then it turned into cool haircuts and cool hair colors. I was with a network marketing company for six years and I was always known for my funky hair color. And really underneath it all, what I was doing was chasing the hair appointment to cover up how white I had gone. And by the time I hit about 35, I was about, I don't know, 75% white underneath all of that color. And it became harder and harder to maintain what I had going on. And I actually have this beautiful friend, her name is Miranda Parker. I will somehow put a link maybe to Miranda Parker's Instagram so you can follow her. She had this amazing gray transition uh, journey that was very inspiring to watch. And so I decided if she can still look that stunning while she's transitioning to gray, maybe I can transition to gray and just be okay with it. But when your hair is your identity for so long, it's a really tough decision to make. And it is a really awkward process to go through as well because you kind of have like really crazy roots or you cut your hair really short. There's so many ways to go about it. Um, and this is how I decided to do it. So I was um, blue. Honestly, this is just sitting right in front of me. My hair was about this color when I decided that I was going to go for it and in, in transition to gray hair. And so for me, it was a little bit easier and I absolutely cheated the process. There's so many women out there that do like the whole Grand Bray effect and they really just kind of let it all go and you know, they're okay with that, or maybe they struggle with it. You know, if you ever follow the hashtag Grombre, there's so many beautiful stories out there of really powerful women who, who go through this process. And so I cheated the system for sure. I grew my hair probably, 
oh, I don't know. I grew it to about here before I like waved the white flag and I was like, all right, Tiffany, please help me because I can't handle this mentally anymore. I feel frumpy all the time. Like I'm having a really hard time and all I wanna do is either shave my head or dye it some funky color. So what we did is we actually removed the color from my hair. So all of the blue that was left while it was fading beautifully, and I would say if you're gonna have a fashion color throughout like a gray transition, blue is definitely the way to go um, because the tones just like kind of match and blend nicely. So we removed the blue and we toned what was left of the things that I lightened. And then I just kept my hair trimmed, trim, 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 until we got to the point where it was just my hair. And then, <laughs> because I didn't realize, like you don't know how white you are underneath all of that until you go for it. So you may think that you're grayer than you are, but you're really not. And so for me, I wasn't as gray as I thought I was gonna be in the front frame of my face. And if you've ever had short hair, you know that like the front frame of your face is everything. You know, if you've ever had like the stacked bob or super short hair, you know that like the points in the front like have to hit a certain point. They're like your security pieces, you know. And so when I finally let everything go, I realized that the front of my hair was not funky enough. And I decided that even though the rest is finally all natural, I need to have something fun and funky in the front of my hair. And so that's when Tiffany and I decided that we were gonna just highlight the front of my hair. And so I'll show you how I blow dry it and whatnot in this same video, but I wanted to kind of dissect it and show you what's mine and what's not. I don't know, hopefully give you some inspiration to just go for it. And also to let you know that if you go for it and it's not what you love, it's okay to still do things to your hair. You know, like I know the whole journey and the whole point of it is so that you can, you know, embrace your natural beauty and all that, but I've been embracing my natural beauty forever. My natural beauty is the beauty that I choose to share with the world. So whether it be that I have funky makeup, funky hair, funky clothes, whatever it is, that's my natural beauty. That is what I, perceive myself as beautiful. So just because, you know, the media puts it out there that a natural beauty is somebody that doesn't touch their hair or their face, that's just not true. You can do whatever you want that makes you feel beautiful and whatever, you know, feels natural to you. And so we did the front of my hair. So let me part it, I just washed it. I'm gonna share with you the products and everything um, that I use with my hair. I think if I part it down the middle, that'll kind of give the best like view of what is mine and what is not. Yeah, see, you can already see it right there. You can already see, okay? So basically from here back is my natural hair. <laughs> this all right here is all white. You can see my natural color popping through. My natural color is very, 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 very dark brunette. It's almost black. Um, and so all in the front here is what is highlighted. So, and you can see a root, right? So you can see a root all the way across here, but you can see that, okay? So this is all bleached. So what Tiffany does is she will do some highlights all right here in the front about this thick back, okay? So not thick at all. And then she'll take it down here and we go a little bit back here. So that way, if I decide to put my hair up, I also have the lightness on the sides. And the back of my hair is very, very dark still and the underneath of my hair is very dark. If you're, gr if you're going through the gray transition, you'll find that the underneath of your hair is really the last place that goes to white. I don't know what the science is behind that, but. So I do have a few pulled highlights in the back just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension and kind of break it up a little bit. So yes, the answer is I do still color my hair technically. So we highlight my hair. Tiffany uses a mixture of um, 20 and 30 volume. So half 20, half 30 volume with what, I, I don't know what the bleach is that she uses. It's most likely milkshake. Um, and then what we do is we tone it. So we process it 
and it sits for about 20 minutes while it processes and lifts up as high as it possibly can. I do want to give you a piece of advice. If your stylist foils your hair and says, let's go sit under the dryer, find yourself a new stylist. That is only going to break your hair. It is only going to open up the cuticle and open up the shaft of your hair so much that it's compromised and that's where you get breakage from blonde. It's actually safer to sit and process for five minutes longer than it is for you to sit underneath heat. So if you have tin foil or bleach on your hair, do not ever sit underneath a dryer. Don't ever add heat, ever. There's a bird on the tree right next to me. It's really pretty, it's red. So anyways, okay. It's just very distracting, that's my ADD kicking in. All right, where was I? Okay, so then once the foils come out and Tiffany is ready to tone, we have used multiple toners and no matter what, eventually my hair starts to pull yellow. It just does. You know, there's so many reasons why um, bleached hair can turn yellow, whether it be that you wear makeup, lots of sunscreen, you don't put sunscreen in your hair, uh, you go to the pool. There's just so many factors, just so many factors. It's, and it's all like environmental, the things that you have around you. And so that's why they make like purple and black shampoos to tone that yellow out. It's like the color wheel, right? And so when you lift, you most likely didn't lift to white. There's usually some type of undertone to it. And so that's why you can get a professional tone at your hairdresser. And so this time, the last time that I got my hair done, which is by far the best highlight that I've ever had to get it to look like it's gray, to get it to look like it's white, was done with, we'll pop a picture up right here, um, if I can find a picture, if not. It was done with, Pravana Moonshine, I think it's like Factor 8 Moonshine Toner. It's a very fast acting toner and it only takes about five minutes for application. So while I'm sitting at the bowl and about to get shampooed, um, Tiffany will apply that toner and she'll just kind of like work it in, work it in, and then we shampoo with a purple shampoo and boom, it looks like this. It looks like it's like white. So. You can ask your stylist if they have the Factor 8 Moonshine from Pravana Fast Acting Toner, um, or they may have something that they love. But that's just what works really good on my hair. And my hair is an anomaly, so my hair can handle a lot of processing. My hair can handle a lot of things. Like I would go in sometimes with black hair and come out with red hair. But I do wanna put a disclaimer on all of the things that we're talking about at a salon. Number one, expect to have a big bill at the end of this process. Don't ever try to pretend like it's an easy thing to do and that it doesn't take all of your stylists, you know, training, time, effort, product, money, all these things. Stylists are probably the most underrated. I feel like they are absolutely worth their weight in gold and when you find a good one, tip them well and take care of them, okay? This is not an easy process. It's also a process that most people cannot get to in one sitting. This could take six hours. This could take three appointments and you will be paying for every single one of those. So just keep that in mind if you wanna do something like I did with my hair. It's very important that we always pay attention to that because I feel like we go in with these expectations and we go in with these photos and when you're looking at hair photos online, number one, they're photoshopped, so there's that. Number two, they have a team of professional stylists like at their beck and call all the time, or it's put out by a hair company, so of course they're gonna put like the best of the best photoshopped hair thing out there. So give your stylist some grace, always tip them well, don't be a dick in their chair, and just be nice, okay? I'm so blessed that my best friend is my stylist and she's always up for doing funky things, but even if she wasn't, you just always take care of them. Okay, so that is that. Now let's talk about the cut. I have had many of styles over the years. Like I used to shave the hole underneath of my head. I used to do all the things. I've tried to grow it. I've tried to do all the things. And when it comes down to it, I just really like short hair. It is my jam, it's my style, it's when I feel like my most authentic self. So I recently just cut three inches off because I was trying to grow it 
and it's just like not me. Whenever I try to grow my hair, it just ends up in a ponytail, and that's sad. That's super sad. I don't like when my hair just ends up in a ponytail. You know, like I like when my hair is down and styled, but when it's longer, I have wicked thick hair, it just takes forever, and then I don't want to do it. Okay, so my hair is considered a stacked blunt bob. <laughs> You're gonna see it better when it is dry, but Tiffany cuts my hair down the middle to the side and to this side when I'm getting my hair cut. And why? Because I do not have a definitive part. I feel like it really takes away from the volume of your hair. So I don't have a part to my hair. And you'll see all the time when you watch my videos, I just flip my hair from side to side. I'm able to part it in the middle with no issues. And while I'm letting my hair air dry, I will just flip my hair from side to side and keep it up and lifted. I feel like when we have such a definitive part, like so say you have like a side part or a middle part, right? And you've just had it for years and years and years and years and this is the only way you do your hair and whenever you pull it back in a pony you're pulling it with that middle part well you're gonna lose that volume like look at how flat my hair looks if you just actually lift your hair up off of your head every once in a while it's gonna give you some great volume so just something to take into consideration my i have six seven nieces i have a lot of nieces and whenever i see them like with that slick back same part for the last 10 years I'm like get rid of that part like just get your fingers in your hair don't be afraid to like lift up and move your hair and that's what's gonna give you volume I feel like I get the most volume while my hair is air drying because I refuse to let my hair have a part and that's where I get a lot of my volume so you can see that it's not from blow drying my hair is soaking wet in the back right now it's from lifting it up while it's drying and just kind of letting it do its thing you guys probably know my friend Alicia. If you don't, I'll link her page here to Alicia the Coffee Queen on Instagram. But when she has curly hair, and I'll see when she's letting her hair air dry, she'll put like a little clip right here, and it holds up that front. It gives it volume. So if you want volume, you have to allow your hair to have volume by lifting that up. Okay, so I have a stacked blunt bob. And what does that mean? That means that a lot of weight is taken out of the back of my hair and there's some layers. So it naturally rounds underneath and it's kind of like layered underneath. And you'll see that more so when it's dry. So let's dry and then I'll show off the cut of my hair a little bit more. All right, we're gonna style our hair now. So I have a few tools and I will link them all in the description. If I can link them on the screen, I will. I don't know how that works. Um, but I'm going to be using head candy products for this um, and a couple of milkshake products. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So number one, I'm going to always put something in my hair to protect it from heat. Um, I do use the third wheel from head candy a ton. However, I'm completely out of it and I'm waiting for my shipment to come in. This is another amazing product. Let's see if I can focus in on that. So this one is from Milkshake. And this one you can find um, through Tiffany Salon. I'll put the link here for that. This is the Incredible Milk. So it's a leave-in treatment. It also contains UV filters. So during the summer, this is an amazing product because it's basically like sunscreen for your hair. So you do want to make sure that you always have some type of heat protectant. That's really the only thing that I consistently use in my hair. I don't overuse products. I like to keep my hair as clean as possible. And so this is one of the products that I will use. Uh, the third wheel from Head Candy is another one. And I'll link this here. Everybody calls it Jesus Juice and everybody just really loves it. Okay, I'm going to be using the Travelista. Look at how cool. YouTube's fun. Look at how cool that just focused. I'm going to be using the Travelista. This is a really cool, what's considered portable, um, blow dryer. This is also from Head Candy. This is such a great investment, you guys, but it's been out of stock for forever. So if you follow the link in the description of this video for this and get on the wait list, um, it is really an incredible technology. I really love this. And it sounds like a super jet when it turns on. So my hair is combed through. Okay, so it's combed through and it's detangled. Right now, the only thing I'm gonna focus on is lifting this up while I dry and getting 
all of the moisture. I'd say 90% of the moisture out of my hair. So here we go. And we landed. Okay, so that is about 85-90% of the moisture out of my hair. Why did it not take that long? Number one, the blow dryer is amazing. But number two, we let our hair air dry for as long as we possibly could stand it. So if you don't have time to let it air dry, that's fine. Just get the moisture out first. And remember, you guys, these are your best tools always with makeup, with hair, with all the things. As long as your hands are clean, these are your best tools, okay? I'm going to take this clip here. This is what is called an alligator clip. I'm going to show you this alligator clip over my influencer hand. <laughs> but this is an alligator clip. And why is that? Because this right here, see this? This makes it so it can grip a ton of hair. And it technically isn't supposed to wrinkle your hair. I think if you leave it there for a long time, you'll eventually get a wrinkle. But also through that head candy link. So I'm gonna just grab my hair and I'm gonna take up half of it, okay, half. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to blow dry the back of this with a round brush. So this is my round brush. That is all the hair that's attached to it. That is disgusting. It's fine. Uh, I believe this is the 32 millimeter and it does have this like little pick thing down at the bottom and that allows you to like part your hair if you want. I've never used it, but a lot of brushes have this at the bottom. What are you looking for when you're looking for a round brush? You are looking for something that is lightweight. You don't want something too heavy so that your arm doesn't get too fatigued. And the number one suggestion that I have when you're looking for a round brush is this section right here, okay? You want to make sure that this is seamless, seamless. If there is a seam right here, that's what's gonna rip your hair. So it's technically not like this part of the brush that rips your hair when it comes to a round brush. It's this part right here. If there's a seam right there, all you gotta do is take some duct tape and just tape that up, okay? That was inappropriate, but it is what it is. So duct tape and it will solve all your problems. I had duct tape on my last set of brushes for the longest time. But this brush is super duper light and let me teach you the quick technique that I use to blow dry my hair before we get into the blow dryer, okay? So we are going to wrap our hair around our, sorry, we're gonna wrap our brush around our hair, okay? And when we twist our brush, we want to use our thumb and fingers, see that? So I'm using my thumb and I'm using my fingers to roll my brush. I'm not going like this and having like a death grip. Like this is not a mallet. We are not banging Declan's mining buckets here. Shameless plug. Um, we are not using a hammer. We're using a tool for our hair. Okay, so nice gentle grip, okay? And we want to practice, practice if you need to. You don't wanna fatigue your wrist, okay? So once our brush is in our hair, that's what we're doing. We are twisting our fingers using our thumb while we have our heat right here, okay? And then once we have our heat on there and everything is dry, I like to just let that cool. Now you can use a cool shot, that's fine. There's a button right here usually that's like a cool shot on your hair. I don't have the brain bandwidth to operate too many things at once. So I simply just stop blow drying it, let it sit for a second, and then I will let it roll through. Look at just that technique alone without hair, without heat is going to give us volume. Okay, so let me show you that in real time. And then as always, I will say this until I am blue in the face, make sure you have an attachment on your blow dryer. Why? Because it gives you this much more distance between your hair and the heat source. If you are putting a direct heat source on your head, on your hair, you're going to have dry, brittle, burnt hair. Okay, so just, it's weird, it's awkward, it's really not easy to get used to, but once you're used to it, you will never know life without the attachment on. Use the attachment, guys. Here we go. Ta-da! Look at that volume. That's wild volume, okay? Real wild. 
So I will repeat this process all the way around and then I will start to do different sections. So I'm gonna blow dry the bottom and then we're gonna blow dry the middle band and then we're gonna blow dry the top and then we're gonna blow dry the front. So four sections, I swear to God, it sounds more complicated than it is. Here we go. But as you guys can see, this obviously gives major volume and this looks a little weird, I get it. Like it's a little bit much, but don't worry because we're gonna bring this bad Larry in and we're gonna tame that down a little bit. So I'm going to then take out my little alligator clip, okay? And I'm gonna take just the top section. So now I have to do the same exact thing to that middle section and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the top. So I'm gonna blow dry all of this. I'm gonna save the front section to show you guys how I do that and I will be back. Okay, we're back and we are completely dry except for this little section of my hair. Now this is by far the most important section for me and my hairstyle. And since we're here talking about what's on top of this head right now, I'm going to show you how I style this specific section of my hair. So we're all styled here, we're all dry, we have lots and lots of volume, even though we're gonna hit it with a flat iron, okay? And you guys, this is a lot of work. <laughs> like, I only do this like once a week, maybe twice a week if I have something going on. This is like what clean hair day looks like and this is why we don't wash our hair every single day because it can take some effort. Now for me personally, because of the way that I get volume from my hair, naturally at this point in my hair journey, my hair wants to either go up or it wants to go back. It doesn't want to come down. And I like that really pretty swoop in the front or a little bit of style in the front. So how I get that is by taking my blow dryer and blow drying the front section of my hair in a downward motion. Let me show you. So as you can see, you can still see my face through here. So this is a very thin section that I do that with. But what that does is it just allows me to kind of style that front a little bit more and have that direction go down instead of it being back. It's just my little money pieces in the front. That's just how I like it to go, okay? And so last but not least, I'm gonna take my brush in this section one more time and I'm gonna show you how I do that signature kind of swoop in the front. It's actually very easy. We're gonna take our brush, we're gonna put our heat on it, and as it cools down, we're just gonna simply pull it to the side, and that is how it's gonna style. And the reason why, you guys, is because a curl, or a wave, or a bend in your hair, it isn't created with the heat. It is created with the heat, but it's set when it cools, right? So however you want it to look at the very end is where your hair needs to be when it cools down from the heat, okay? So let's do the front. And as you can see, that whole little section of hair is gonna now go that way. And that is how I'm able to have that volume and be able to put my hair to each side and get that same look no matter where it is that I'm gonna be blow drying my hair or how, wherever I'm gonna be styling my hair. So you can see we still have that great volume. You can flip your hair either way and if you really wanna get sassy with it, you can part it in the middle and you still have that lift up off of your scalp, okay? So to create just some finishing touches, I do like to use a flat iron and I'll show you where I like to use that. So I'm gonna make sure that there's no tangles left in my hair. How cute is this comb? This is from Fena and Faye. This is a handmade brush. I'll we'll link that in the description too, okay? So what I like to do is this is a little bit too bouncy for me, right? It's a little bit, I feel like it dates me just a little bit. It kind of takes the edge off to have way too much roundness in my hairstyle. So I will take just these little sections right here and my flat iron. My flat iron is only on 350 degrees. It goes up to 450, but it's absolutely unnecessary for you to have 
any type of heat at 450 degrees, unless a professional is using it for a reason, stop using so much heat on your hair. You're only damaging it. And I'm just going to straighten a few pieces to kind of bring that edge back, right? I like to have the bounce in my hair, but it's a little bit too much in some sections, okay? So I'm just gonna bring that little bit of an edginess back to my hair by flat ironing just a few pieces, not too many, okay? And if this one is like too much of a curve, we're gonna go that way. And then also right here in the front. It's really the front. I feel like it's a little bit like Brady Bunch-ish when it's like so rounded and it doesn't have any of that like crispness to it. After all, this is a stacked blunt bob, right? So we have that bluntness for a reason. We want to have that blunt show through. And then you guys, that is it. I will put one more product in my hair and it is the Milkshake Let It Shine. So this is a shine spray from milkshake that's what i just said i repeat myself a lot and we're just going to give it an overall quick little number you can use this wet or dry whatever tickles your fancy and that right there you guys is how we style my gray highlighted stacked blunt bob <laughs> It's very strange to make a YouTube video and be so long-winded, but this is pretty real-time, you know, minus, this would probably take me, from start to finish, this would probably take me about 15 minutes if I wasn't jib-jabbering and trying to teach you guys some stuff. So, that is it. This is definitely one of my most requested tutorials, is to talk about my hair, the color of it, the products that I use, and how I style it and what you can ask for at a salon near you with your stylist. So quick rundown, it is a stacked blunt bob. <laughs> My hair is naturally gray in the back, but the front is highlighted with a mixture of 20 and 30 volume for processing. My toner is a Pravana, I think it's Factor 8 Moonshine Fast Acting toner. I could definitely be wrong, but I will have like the specifics in the description of this video and a link to it as well. Um, you can purchase any of the head candy tools or the head candy products through the link in the description as well. And also any of the milkshake products will be uh, linked under there as well. Discount code for milkshake, no discount code for head candy. I hope you guys enjoyed my first like real tutorial for YouTube using like a fancy camera. It's been a long time since I've used a fancy camera. It was so fun to hang out with you guys and if you found any value to this, please hit the subscribe button and I will be back with my next video to talk about the journey that I went through um, when I got my tummy tuck. So I'll see you guys soon, bye.